47 days away from the start of the Duke men's basketball season. Of course, we're counting down the days until we get to see the start of the John Shire era as head coach for our Duke Blue Devils. Coming up on today's show, a fill-in-the-blank Wednesday. We're going to have a whole lot of fun right here on Locked On Blue Devils. Let's get to it. Stick by town. Hey, make sure you listen, man, to Locked On Blue Devils with J.J. Jackson. He's awesome, baby. You are Locked On Blue Devils, your daily podcast on the Duke Blue Devils, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Hello, everybody, and welcome into another episode of the Locked On Blue Devils podcast. It's so great to have you here with us on this Wednesday. My name is JJ Jackson, and I proudly serve as this podcast, a daily podcast talking about the life of Duke athletics, all sports involved. We've got a big focus coming up today on Duke men's basketball and a fill in the blank Wednesday. I'd like to let you know and let you, and I would like to thank LinkedIn Jobs for being the official college football and college basketball recruiting sponsor across the Locked On College Network. LinkedIn Jobs helps you find the candidates you want to talk to faster. Post your job for free at linkedin.com slash locked on college. Terms and conditions apply. If you haven't done so already, be sure to follow our show on Twitter at LO underscore Blue Devils and give me a follow on Twitter as well at underscore JJ underscore Jackson underscore like and subscribe to this podcast on YouTube. Thanks for watching us each and every day. Share it with your friends. We're on our march to 1,000 subscribers, and your support means the absolute world to us here at Lockdown Blue Devils. Coming up on today's show, my very good friend, Kevin Connolly, the site expert for Ball Durham, is here with us. And Kevin, the countdown is on. We're now less than 50 days away from the start of the Duke men's basketball season. It's exciting. Now really can't wait for it to get here so I don't have to rush the summer away since we're in the end of September, but uh, <laughs> ready to go, ready to see some basketball. Yeah, it's going to be outstanding. It's uh, it, it's fun to see this football season get off and going mm-hmm. uh, to the start that Duke has had. Obviously a huge game coming up this weekend, a battle of the unbeatens between Duke and Kansas, which how, how frequently can you say things like that? Uh, but here we are. We've got the Champions Classic basketball matchup set to happen to start the basketball season for Duke, but a big Duke and Kansas football matchup this weekend as well. Yeah, I mean, it's really exciting. A little bum that uh, college game day is not going there. I mean, they'll, they'll be there for uh, basketball games, but how often do they get to go college game day for a Duke-Kansas football game? Probably never. This might be the only chance they get. So uh, I guess that's just me. But, um, no, it should be a good one. Really excited. And we talked about it a little bit. Mike Elko, man, he's got he's got this program going the right way. Don't worry, it's not just you. I've already talked this week about the fact that uh, they should have made a trip to Lawrence, Kansas for college game day because they do it so frequently uh, for the basketball side of things. Duke and Kansas, two of the very few Power 5 schools that have never hosted the football version of college game day. Maybe if we continue to have winning results like we've had uh, to start this season, that can change for the Duke squad. All right, so today we're going to have another fill-in-the-blank Wednesday uh, we've got basketball topics. And Kevin, you ready to just dive right into these? Ready to go. Can't wait. It was really fun the last time. All right. So here we go. Our first one due up today. Blank is the most likely to hit a clutch shot in the 2010s for Duke men's basketball. The 2010s, I'm making you choose one. Blank is the most likely to hit a clutch shot in the 2010s. I mean, there's a lot to choose from, but this one came pretty easily to me. Tyus Jones. I mean, he's got his nickname Tyus Stones for a reason. I mean, I also thought about John Shire just because that 2010 national title run, I felt like he was the one. I mean, he had Nolan Smith and everything, but felt like he was the one making all the big shots. But yeah, I, I'm going I'm going Tyus Jones here, and I think it might be an easy call. It is. Uh, Tyus Stones is such a good nickname to have, uh, and that certainly helps your case. The fact that the year ended in winning the national championship – also speaks volumes the fact that he hit a big shot against Wisconsin in the title game to really put it away, had that big shot against Virginia earlier in the season. I think Tyus Jones is the obvious answer. I'm glad you gave some love to John Shire. Let me give some love, Kevin, to Austin Rivers for Mm -hmm. his 2012 shot that he had 
in the Dean Smith Center to knock off the Tar Heels. That was absolutely epic. So I got to give some love to Austin Rivers too. Yeah, I mean, that was, I feel like in any basketball game you watch, you always have that, or even football, any type of sport, you have that no, 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 yes moment. And, and that kind of felt like that where even I think it was Seth Curry in the corner telling him to go, go, go to the basket, tie this thing up. And he pulls up for three over, uh, was it Tyler Zeller? Yeah. Drain, drains it in one of the, one of the, probably one of the better comebacks in uh, Duke basketball regular season history. All right. So we're going to go with Tyus Jones for that first one. Blank is the most likely to hit a clutch shot in the 2010s. And of course, Tyus Jones on a national championship winning team for Duke. Similar scenario when Gordon Hayward's last second shot was in the air in the 2010 title game. I thought blank. It I was want Duke good. fans to sound off on this in the comments as well. But you thought it was good. I thought it was good. I mean, <laughs> it had it had, like you could tell on one of those like three quarter court, half court shots. Like you could tell if it if it is too long. You could tell if it's too short. It was like, and it was like that. Whatever it was, half a second felt like it was about five minutes. It was like all right, it's long enough. It has the good. It has the perfect arc. And like I was like, there's no way this this is gonna end like this with. But it, it made sense because, like, Butler, the Cinderella, and, and they're going to knock off David Goliath. They're going to knock off Duke to win the national championship. It kind of had – it was amazing how many thoughts you could get going through your head in that split second. Like, everything rushed through your mind. And none of it was good in terms of Duke winning good. Like, everything was like, this shot is good, and Duke's going to lose on this incredible buzzer beater to this underdog story. And – but thankfully missed. Yeah, when, when the shot is in the air, I'm with you. I thought it was never going to come down. I thought we were going to be waiting forever to find out the result of this thing. I'm also uh, the paranoid basketball fans that we can be uh, wanting to make sure there's no silly foul called at any point. Like, please stay away from him. Uh, do not commit a foul on a three-point shot like this. You see Kyle Singler get absolutely clobbered by a screen trying to defend Gordon Hayward. But, uh, yeah, that'd be my biggest thing is I just thought that shot was never, ever going to land. What a national championship game that was. Yeah, I mean, that was that was one of the best. I mean, um, I feel like recently we've had a lot of good championship games, which, yes. thankfully, I mean, I think what maybe the last blowout that immediately comes to my mind is when I think it was Villanova steamrolled um, Michigan in yes. 2019, I think, 2018 one of those years. Um, but yeah, I mean, but that one, that one always seems like it comes to everybody's mind as one of the best. Such a good game. And uh, yeah, big time win for Duke, the fourth of their five national championships. All right. We've got to take our first time out of today's show. Don't worry though. We've got more fill in the blank topics and conversations coming up next right here on locked on blue devils. Here we are locked on blue devils today. I'd like to thank one of our proud sponsors, LinkedIn. These days, every new potential hire can feel like a high stakes wager for your small business. You want to be 100% certain that you have access to the best qualified candidates available. That's why you've got to check out LinkedIn Jobs. Here's what you could do. Add your job in the purple hashtag hiring frame to your LinkedIn profile to spread the word that you're hiring. Simple tools like screening questions make it easy to focus on candidates with just the right skills and experience so you can quickly prioritize who you would like to interview and hire. LinkedIn Jobs helps you find the qualified candidates you want to talk to faster and for free. Post your job for free at linkedin.com slash locked on college. That's linkedin.com slash locked on college to post your job for free. Terms and conditions apply. Moving forward here on today's episode of Locked On Blue Devils, JJ Jackson, alongside my buddy Kevin Connolly, the site expert for Ball Durham. More fill in the blanks here. Uh, this is an amazing question that I'm about to ask you, and I have enjoyed these fill-in-the-blank shows because I've also enjoyed seeing the comments that come with it on YouTube. Fill out the blanks yourself uh, to join the conversation. Here's our next one. A Duke men's basketball moment in time that there should be a movie made about is blank. This is a good one because obviously the easy answer should last season have ended better was last year. I mean, Coach right. K's final year, go on, it beat North Carolina in the Final Four, he won the national championship against Kansas. That, that was the easy answer, but it didn't happen, so that can't be my answer. The two moments that immediately came to my mind, and 
I guess I'm leaning more like documentary than than movie. Sure. Is the 91 Final Four when they beat UNLV and, and UNLV was the cream of the crop back then. Great. One of the best team, best teams, best programs of all time. And then you beat Kansas in the national championship. Or which I think is maybe a more interesting answer is the 2020 team that the season got cut down because of COVID. Because that was a team that uh, it, the, talk about finding your stride at the right time. Um, Trey Jones in his sophomore year, trying to um, exercise the demons of losing in the Elite Eight last year. You had a walk-on of an NBA legend suddenly emerging as the team's X factor. Um, and it really just got all brought to to a screeching halt because of the pandemic and, and everything getting canned. And I mean, Florida State gets handed the ACC championship trophy, even though they didn't play a game in the tournament. I just I think those are those are my two options that I was really narrowing it down to. And um, I feel like there have been documentaries and movies about like the events involving that 1991 Final Four. I mean, you have, look at the what I still hate Christian Leitner doc and, and all that. So I just think there hasn't been like a Duke specific like film produced on like that that COVID team that just beat the brakes off of Carolina in the regular season finale and basically had the wrong rug pulled out from under them. Because if you remember, I mean, college basketball was really wide open that year. There was, there was no single dominant team. So I, I think it, that's always one of the biggest what ifs, what if that team got a chance to make the to play in the postseason. Yeah. We were kind of robbed of that. What, what if we would have had that opportunity to play in the tournament? I'm right there with you. I'd be so curious to find out what would have happened, what would have taken place uh, in that 2020 season. I think it is, uh, over time, I, I talked about this a lot, actually, during the draft process this past year. Somebody like Vernon Carey Jr. or Cassius Stanley, guys that only got to play one season for Duke men's basketball before starting their pro careers, sometimes their memories get fogged a little bit because they we don't have those NCAA tournament playing memories that we have for some of those other guys. So I really do, uh, I do like that. I would be, uh, it'd be fun to watch a documentary like that. And and maybe we can just sort of turn this into a, a documentary, but a Duke men's basketball moment in time that I would love to see uh, a movie, a, a documentary, whatever you want to call it about. What about just behind the scenes, a breakdown of the, the Coach K program shift in 2011 when Duke gets the commitment of Kyrie Irving. And from that moment moving forward, there's this one and done shift. It's like Duke decides, you know what? We see a John Calipari. We see what you're doing there at Kentucky. And we're now going to take pride in having the number one recruiting class. Because that changed the program. That changed mm -hmm. the last decade of Duke men's basketball that we've been watching. That's a massive moment. Yeah, it really is. And, I mean, uh, I'm a Jersey guy. So I remember um, the the university my, my father worked at, uh, Kyrie Irving's high school, St. Pat's, played there all the time. And I remember going there as, as, I mean, young kid, what I couldn't have been more than seven, eight years old and, um, sitting there and watching him and, and the crowds that would just come in for these games. I mean, you really didn't have like your, you had your YouTube highlights, but you didn't have all these other social media channels that, that cover, um, and make highlight reels of, of high school basketball players, just about every single high school basketball. Right. It was only like the big time guys. And yeah, just the crowds that would come in and line up just to see, Kyrie Irving play in high school. I mean, it was it was crazy, absolutely crazy. And again, I don't know that it's it's necessarily a uh, a just Kyrie specific. And and spoiler yeah. alert for folks out there, we're going to talk a little bit more about Kyrie Irving in this very episode of Locked On Blue Devils. Uh, but getting his commitment and then having him go on to be the number one pick in the NBA draft, there that's a massive moment because mm -hmm. beyond Kyrie Irving. Then you start looking at the likes of Austin Rivers and Jabari Parker and then that 2015 team that had several one-and-done guys, Brandon Ingram right after that, so on and so forth. Like There was a shift. There was a moment where Duke did decide this is what we've got to do. Yeah, and I mean, really, look, it's basically spans from – I mean, there's a couple guys before that Kyrie Irving era or whatever, but you look at really Kyrie Irving all the way up till now and Paolo Banquero. Like, that's kind of like what that – would that would frame. And I mean, it wouldn't just stop there. Cause it's until I know there was rumors of yesterday of uh, 
the NBA changing the rules of saying you can go out of high school, but right. so, maybe, so maybe your your time span of your movie is coming to an end here. Maybe it's coming <laughs> to an end. Kyrie Irving to, I mean, who knows? Maybe this year, um, uh, who knows? A couple more years, how long that lasts? But uh, yeah, that I would be interested. I would be very interested to watch that. Let us know in the comments what Dukeman's basketball moment you would love to see a movie made about. All right, next up, John Shire's three assistant coaches in 2022-2023 are blank. So we're talking Chris Carowell, Jay Lucas, Emil Jefferson. John Shire's three assistant coaches in 2022-2023 are blank. I go with invaluable um, just because it's a first-year head coach um, and he has coached a game here and there in his career. Um, but you, you have one experienced assistant in Carowell who's been at Duke. I mean, Emil Jefferson, I think now he's elevating into that assistant coaching role. Um, player, national champion as a player, been on the staff, but just hasn't been that assistant coach. And, and the same thing with Lucas is, all right, he's been there, done that as an assistant coach, but he's never been at Duke before. There, there's that still that transition. So I think those three are going to be invaluable to John Shire this year. Um, just because he's going to need people to lean on as a first-year head coach. Like that word, well-balanced, was something that that came to mind for me, given the fact that you've got Chris Carwell, who's been there for so many years now at this point and truly can be a right hand uh, for John Shire. Uh, we really should should add Mike Schrage to this as well, yeah. even though he's not listed technically as an assistant coach, being with the program before, having some years as the Elon head coach of the state, now on the staff. But well balanced in that Mill Jefferson, this young development guy who we now see getting going in his first year. We're seeing some all access mic'd up footage of a meal this week that Duke men's basketball put out on social media. And then the fact that John Shire made the decision to bring an outsider in. Like at the time, that just wasn't something that we saw Mike Krzyzewski do too frequently. But Jay Lucas, with no connection to the program whatsoever, now joins the Brotherhood and he's out there putting a great effort in on the recruiting trail. So well-balanced was something that came to mind for me there. Yeah, I think that's that's very fair. And again, it's it's that whole outsider perspective on Lucas. I mean, no one really saw it coming. It hasn't really happened before. Um, and I mean, he's going to be a good assistant coach, but obviously he's known for his biggest thing as one of being, being one of the best recruiters out there. So um, he joins a good squad to try and recruit players, uh, those five stars down to Durham now. Boy, does he. What a good squad he's joining there uh, for John Shire in year one. Let's take our final time out here on today's episode of Lockdown Blue Devils. A couple of more fill in the blanks to go here on the program. Lockdown Blue Devils today is brought to you by our friends over at Bet Online, your number one source for all your pro and college football betting needs. Find all the latest league developments, game matchups, news, and podcasts, including this year's opening week's games. Bet Online is your continued source for all your sporting wagering information, including live betting, esports, and scores. It's the fastest and easiest way to check in on all your favorite sports and events, including Major League Baseball, MMA, boxing, and golf. Head to the website today or use your mobile device to learn more about the trends in action. Bet Online, where the game starts. All right, final few moments here on today's episode of Lockdown Blue Devils. J.J. Jackson alongside Kevin Connolly, the site expert for Ball Durham. Kevin, give us a quick plug to balldurham.com. What you got going on over there at the website? Balldurham.com. We actually have a new site expert on hand, uh, Del Barris. He's doing everything football, He's and he's got a lot of content to come. Uh, basketball, obviously, we're still going strong as always. So anything you want, Duke Athletics, football, basketball, anything else in between, balldurham.com. Give us a follow on Twitter at ball underscore Durham. We're going to do just that and continue to read the great work and coverage that you've got there. All right, let's jump back into it. A couple of more fill in the blanks to go today. Uh, we said we'd get back to Kyrie Irving. Here we are. Kyrie Irving's Duke career should be remembered as blank. This one's tough, but I, I got to go incomplete. Yeah. It just feels yeah. incomplete. I mean, obviously the injury killed him. Um, tried to come back for the NCAA tournament. You just saw he wasn't he wasn't the same because, I mean, he probably wins the player of the year if he stays healthy for the entire season just on, what, his first eight games, nine games, especially that game against Michigan State. I mean, he was the most electric player in college basketball when he was on the court. And, I mean, 
can anyone disagree that Duke was going to go back to back if he plays when is healthy the entire year? It kind of felt like that. I mean, to me, it certainly did. Um, so yeah, I, I go incomplete because it just feels like we are robbed of seeing perhaps one of the all time best at Duke play his, his entire career there. A really fun season there in 2011 uh, with that Duke men's basketball squad. We saw Nolan Smith really take that next step forward with that team in his senior season. So Kyrie Irving's Duke career should be remembered as blank. Brief would be a word to put in here because, again, it was only 11 games. Uh, as odd as it is, and again, the, the end wasn't great. The team lost in the Sweet 16 to Arizona that season. Uh, Derek Williams on that Wildcats squad had a phenomenal game against Duke in that one. At least we did get to see Kyrie Irving come back and play a little bit there mm -hmm. at the very end. But there's rust involved. There's chemistry dynamics that had to totally shift as Duke went through the entire ACC portion of their schedule that season without Kyrie. So incomplete is also a phenomenal word to put in there. All right, the 2023 Duke men's basketball recruit that I'm most excited about is blank. So fellas that aren't even on campus yet, that won't even be playing on this year's team. The 2023 Duke men's basketball recruit that I'm most excited about is blank. Another easy one for me. And, and it'll be, it'll be a story, but it's brief, but it's Mackenzie Mbaco. And I'll tell you why I'm a Jersey guy. Um, I broadcast uh, a lot of Jersey high school basketball games. One of the schools that my company ha has does a lot of their games is Roselle Catholic. So Mackenzie Mbaco just transferred over to Roselle Catholic, um, did a couple of his games when he was at Gill St. Bernard's last year, but now going to be doing just about all of his games at Roselle Catholic. Um, he's teaming up. Uh, a couple of guys going down to Topaco Road. He's teaming up with uh, Simeon Wilcher, who's at Roselle Catholic. He's going to Carolina next year. He's a 2023 recruit too. So it's kind of like what we saw at Archbishop Stepanak a couple years ago with A.J. Griffin and R.J. Davis, uh, both going to Duke and Carolina. Uh, that's what we're going to see next year. But Mackenzie Mbaco, I mean, when I saw him last year as a junior, he was a man amongst boys. I mean, he's just so physically developed. He's so talented. He's so strong. Um, and he's only going to get better um, at Roselle Catholic. Might be biased speaking there, but Roselle Catholic, they were the best team in New Jersey last year without him. Um, they were one of the top five to ten teams in the country. And now they add a talent like Mackenzie Mbaco, a top five recruit. Um, there's no more tournament of champions in New Jersey. The uh, NJSIA got, actually got rid of it, which is which is a shame. Roselle Catholic won the last one, but uh, yeah, they're going to be the best team in New Jersey, and they're going to be a top five team in the country, if you ask me. So Mackenzie yeah. and Bronco, my slam dunk answer. Yeah, he is somebody that uh, a lot of people are super excited about because he is such a a talent, and to see him team up with Timmy and Wiltshire in his final year is going to be uh, really fun to watch. We can go all the way back over a decade. Uh, out of the, the Philly area, we, we saw Gerald Henderson and Wayne Ellington be high school teammates. And then both of those guys, Henderson goes to play for us at Duke. Ellington goes down uh, to Chapel Hill to play for the Tar Heels. It is kind of fun when you see that dynamic there. And all of the recruiting insight that we get each and every week from Jason Jordan, the director of college basketball recruiting for Sports Illustrated, lets you know, hey, McKenzie is definitely that guy for this mm -hmm. Duke men's basketball. Uh, I'm going to be fun here. And the 2023 Duke men's basketball recruit that I'm most excited about is blank. I'm going to say all of them, Kevin, because I don't want to have to just choose one uh, because, man, what a class we've been able to put together. And uh, I will give some love to TJ Power. I love this final ad uh, that mm -hmm. Duke's been able to get in that 2023 class. That guy is going to be a playmaker for the Blue Devils. Yeah, I think that was, that was a huge commitment. I mean, he's skyrocketed up the recruiting ranks. Um, this summer, and who knows, might see him on the baseball team with Chris Pollard. Yeah. As well. well, we'll have to wait and find out to see if that all pans out. No doubt about that. It's going to be a whole lot of fun. And again, this was a great episode of Fill in the Blank with my good pal Kevin Connolly. Answer the questions yourselves in the comments below. I'd love to hear what you're thinking about some of these. Kevin, it's always great to catch up with you. Thanks again for coming on the show today. JJ, love to be here. Thanks for having me. That's my good pal, Kevin Connolly, the site expert for Ball Durham, joining us here on today's episode of Locked On Blue Devils. If you haven't done so already, subscribe on YouTube to watch the show daily. Leave us a five-star rating and review on the Apple Podcast platform. We'll be back at it tomorrow. Tomorrow's show on a Thursday features my good buddy Josh Cox from Duke Football Talks Section 17 Podcast. That's going to do it for today's show. As always, go Duke. I'll talk to you tomorrow. My name is JJ Jackson. Thank you and good day.